Modern homes, you know, they rot, warp, and fail in just a few decades. Yet Viking roof timbers pulled from bogs, churches, and burial sites are remarkably still structurally sound after a thousand years. That contrast isn't just some romantic exaggeration. It's, well, physical evidence. Today, we're uncovering how Vikings built roof timber to last centuries, why their methods worked, and why modern construction keeps repeating the same mistakes. And this isn't about nostalgia. It's really about understanding a material science tradition that modern building culture, for some reason, abandoned, and what still can be recovered from it. The Viking approach to timber began long before an axe ever touched the tree. Wood selection was a slow, deliberate process, guided by season, location, and growth pattern. Vikings, you see, preferred slow-grown pine, oak, and spruce from cold climates where trees formed dense growth rings. These trees grew under stress, producing tighter grain and, you know, higher resin content. Modern forestry does pretty much the opposite, prioritizing fast growth and volume. The result is wood that looks solid, but, you know, lacks internal durability. Viking builders knew that speed in growth meant weakness in structure. Timing the cut was as important as the species itself. Trees were felled in deep winter when sap was lowest and sugars were withdrawn into the roots. This reduced food sources for insects and fungi from the start. Modern timber is often cut year-round, trapping sugars inside the wood where decay organisms thrive. Vikings didn't need chemical treatments because biology was already on their side. Once felled, Viking timber was never rushed into construction. Logs were left to season slowly, sometimes for years. Air drying occurred under cover, with airflow but no direct exposure. This slow seasoning allowed internal stresses to equalize naturally. Modern kilns force moisture out rapidly, creating microfractures that aren't visible but weaken the timber over time. Vikings accepted waiting as part of building. Modern systems treat waiting as inefficiency. One of the most critical and well misunderstood Viking techniques was surface preservation through controlled exposure rather than sealing. Roof timbers were often lightly charred or treated with pine tar. Charring closed surface pores and killed fungi without compromising strength. Pine tar penetrated fibres, repelling water while allowing the wood to breathe. Modern paints and sealants trap moisture instead. When water inevitably gets in, it has nowhere to go. Decay follows. Viking roofs survived because they shed water and dried quickly. Joinery played an equally decisive role. Vikings avoided metal fasteners where possible. Iron corrodes and expands, splitting wood from the inside. Instead, they used complex joinery that allowed wood to move with humidity changes. Peg joints, scarf joints, and interlocking beams distributed stress rather than concentrating it. Modern construction often relies on nails and screws driven through fibres, creating permanent weak points. Viking roofs flexed, you know. 
Modern roofs, on the other hand, well, they resist until they break. Roof design itself reflected a deep environmental understanding. Viking roofs were steep, shedding snow and rain quickly. Overhangs were generous, protecting walls from constant moisture. And air gaps allowed circulation, preventing condensation. Modern homes often favour shallow roof lines and sealed cavities that trap moisture. Failure isn't accidental, really. It's designed in through ignorance of climate behaviour. The social structure around building also mattered. Viking construction was communal, with knowledge passed through apprenticeships, not manuals. Builders understood wood because they worked with it constantly. They knew how it smelled when ready, how it sounded when struck, how it behaved in damp weather. Modern builders work to code, not material behaviour. Codes change. Wood doesn't. What makes Viking roof timber endure isn't a single trick. It's a system. Selection, timing, seasoning, treatment, joinery and design all work together. Remove one element and longevity suffers. Modern construction removed most of them in favour of speed and predictability. That trade-off delivered houses faster but not better. These methods are not lost to time, they're lost to habit. Anyone building with wood today can apply parts of this knowledge. Choose slower-grown timber when possible. Cut or purchase wood felled in dormant seasons. Air dry longer than recommended. Use breathable finishes like oil, tar or lime wash instead of plastic coatings. When designing roofs, it's really important to ensure they shed water aggressively. And, you know, when working with wood, it's best to allow it to move naturally rather than restraining it with metal. This approach truly respects the materials and, well, leads to much more durable structures in the long run. The Vikings didn't build for resale value. They built for survival, inheritance and continuity. A roof wasn't a component. It was protection for generations. That mindset shaped every decision. You know, modern homes fail not because materials are worse, but because priorities changed. Understanding Viking roof timber isn't about copying the past exactly. It's about recognising that durability comes from respecting material limits rather than overpowering them. Wood wants to breathe, move and age slowly. When allowed to do so, it can outlast empires. If this deep dive into ancient building logic changed how you think about modern construction, well, subscribe to the channel and share this episode with someone who still believes old buildings lasted by accident. Relic logic exists to uncover why ancient systems worked, not to romanticize them but to learn from them while we still can.